everybody. Um, so crypto is the real world. Um, today, I'm going to try to convince you that crypto isn't a niche anymore, but that in fact, it's a, it's a blueprint to the future of economy. Um, and one thing that triggered me to pick this topic is that like, um, increasingly we started using the term RWAs, the real world assets, which kind of implies that, well, all of the other stuff that we've been using so far isn't the real world. And I actually would like to protest today uh, and make a case about um, this actually not being the reality. Uh, so my name is Joseph. Uh, I got into crypto in uh, 20, 2011, thanks to Silk Road. Um, then thanks to Ethereum, I started organizing meetups and uh, started getting my hands dirty. Um, I used to work as a Solidity Dev and Auditor. Uh, and then uh, since 2018, I helped the Ethereum Foundation with organizing operations around the R&D teams. And finally, since the beginning of 2022, um, I started Pondow and started hosting conferences on my own. As, as mentioned, I used to help with DEF CONs before, so I'm thrilled to see how, how they've grown. And well, thanks to, to the team organizing this. I know you can't see the talks, but maybe later this will make you happy. Um, so I'll take you through several steps. First, I'll look at, into the terminology. What is an economy? Or what is the crypto native economy? Uh, and how does it compare to the real world? And finally, I'll finish up with a quick retrospect of the past few years. So what is an economy? Um, I'll borrow a definition from the Austrian economics um, uh, of basically a too long didn't read from, from Mises and, uh, and Hayek. An economy is the result of individual actions and choices driven by human purpose and the subjective preferences. It is a network of voluntary exchanges and cooperative activities where resources are allocated through the spontaneous interactions of individuals in the market. So we could say it's, it's a living organism. And here during the talk, I'll try to, try to describe that living organism very imperfectly, uh, because it's very hard to give you the up-to-date numbers. So what you see here, what, you, what you're going to see, are basically best attempts and estimates. Uh, and I therefore would like to ask you to challenge those numbers and later on uh, reach out or like publish uh, articles on your own uh, trying to, to get those numbers right, because that's the only way we can actually describe the reality in the best way. So what is the crypto native economy? With Pond, we've been publishing these crypto native economy reports for the past several years. And what we attempt is to look into the on-chain revenue. So all of the stuff that happens on-chain as a measurement of that economic interaction, of the demand for using the stuff that all of us are working on. So for the purpose of the, uh, of the reports, we picked L1 fees, L2 fees, and protocol fees but there's a lot more. Uh, so the stuff that's not included in our numbers but could be considered as the measure of the, the crypto native economy or the crypto economy would be revenues from centralized exchanges, mining and staking rewards, crypto services, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so quick, too long, didn't read. You can find all of the reports uh, under QR code or under cryptonative.pondo.xyz. Uh, but in 2020, the, the on-chain revenues were somewhere around 1.44 billion. 2021, the peak of the bull market, 20 billion, and going down from there. Now in 2024, we, we finally started seeing a pickup in, uh, in the demand. And our estimate, based on the numbers um, from the end of October, is that it will uh, result in something like 12 to 15 billion dollars. And this is, again, just the on-chain part. Um, so as I said, well, this is going to be imperfect. So this is, there is some napkin math to give you a glimpse into how does the ecosystem actually look like. So how many people do work in crypto? Uh, if you take some examples of the, the roughly known numbers, um, this is an estimate of um, um, figuring out like how many people get paid in crypto. This isn't all of the ones that somehow make a living on crypto, but the ones that we could say are employed in a way. So if we say, take the examples of the biggest companies, such as Coinbase, uh, they, I think they report somewhere around 3.6 thousand uh, people, Binance roughly uh, uh, 2,500. We take 10 of those companies, 50 companies of the size of like roughly EF or Nethermind, having 250, uh, 100 smaller projects, L1s, L2s, uh, you name it, at like 50, uh, 50 people a team, uh, 500 of startups uh, of the size of Pondow, thousands of early stage projects, and tens of thousands of like team ups. Uh, that's roughly 100,000 people um, that we can say are employed in crypto, uh, which isn't a lot, obviously. Um, what's the total market cap? This should be the up to date number from this morning. So the tokens, the tokens and coins only, uh, result in $3.2 uh, trillion. 
Um, there is also the market cap, which we didn't include in the crypto native economy report, but it's the, the crypto economy itself. There would be companies like Binance, like MicroStrategy, maybe even Robinhood. Uh, uh, we would be somewhere below $200 billion. Uh, I think Coinbase is at like $85 billion of, of market cap. Plus, there is a ton of companies that are private, privately owned. They're like Binance, chain analysis, chain analysis like OpenSea. All of those would rank in, in billions. Obviously, Binance very likely much higher than that. Um, so how does this reflect on the, the rest of the economy, uh, the so-called real world? Um, to compare these two, we basically picked these three metrics, the market caps, the revenues, and the people. Uh, and I hope this will give you some perspective about where we stand today. So comparing the market caps, um, we basically took the stock market cap. Uh, we take like the stock market caps as again the imperfect metric. Um, you can you can take that as like demand to somehow participate on those assets um, that either can act as a store of value or act as a promise of future value uh, in the form of revenues. Uh, so the entire stock, uh, the entire like tech stock market. By the way, there are overlaps between these. Um, would be today valued at uh, $33 trillion. Uh, the banking sector, the publicly traded banks, $10, billion, uh, 10, $10 trillion. Energy sector, likewise, pharma, uh, six, uh, $6 trillion. Gaming, 4.2. Uh, and then there's crypto at like 3.8. Um, then there is autom automotive. Um, so basically all of the car manufacturers. And this is, this is very real, right? Like we would all agree that like that's the real world, and crypto is actually already valued uh, more than uh, more than this part of the real world. Um, then you have entertainment at two trillion, food industry. That's basically the large corporations. We definitely don't go deeper into like the entire economy behind like the food industry or any of these, just the publicly traded companies. And finally, airlines. There's one thing I want to uh, focus on, which is the gaming and entertainment comparison. Um, here are the revenue estimates. Let's just do a quick read through, but let's focus on the entertainment and gaming. Uh, so the entertainment, uh, even though it's valued lower than the gaming industry, and there is a partial overlap, um, is nearing um, uh, $900 billion, and the, the gaming is at like $600 billion in revenues. Crypto, including the crypto native part, including the stake and rewards, including the revenues of like Binance and Coinbase and Kraken and so on, I would argue it's like still below like $100, $100 billion. Um, now, following up on the people metric, uh, uh, this is the rough estimate of like how many people are employed by these sectors. And obviously, like there's over three billion people who are employed somewhere or are making a living. So this is again just zoomed in on the stock companies. Um, but there is an important, like interesting and important fact here. Look at entertainment and gaming, where gaming is like valued. Uh, higher than entertainment. Entertainment still makes a bigger revenue, um, um, but also employs uh, more than twice as many people as the entertainment as such. Uh, I would argue that the gaming industry is essentially a more effective um, form of entertainment, where um, the, the value per an individual in the segment uh, is much higher than the overall entertainment, um, because they just create something more efficiently, they create content that can like scale better, that can people and people can stay with the content for much longer. My argument would be, crypto does very similar thing for finance, and like we are still in this very very early stages of just few hundred or few hundred thousand people working in the ecosystem, uh, and we're yet to see basically the full scope of where where crypto can actually compete with the rest of the uh, of the of the financial ecosystem and economy. Um, so that's that's a rough comparison in numbers. Um, I think we are still very early. I mean, we're obviously like Bitcoin was started in uh, 2009. Um, the World Wide Web was started in 19, um, 1989, and look where where it has led us, like with multiple companies from the internet era being in the top 10. Um, this is, was actually isn't the up-to-date slide. I had to update it this morning because Bitcoin again like popped up into being the ninth most valuable um, asset, asset in the world. This is from the infinite market cap. Um, Ethereum is quite close. It's the, it's the number, it's actually 32 now. 
Uh, and I would say within a year, we'd actually again see Ethereum to uh, get pass over like the, the giants like MasterCard or Visa um, as, as a contender in this like globalized ecosystem. And if you look at all of these companies, I think it's like very hard to argue against crypto being the real thing. Like this, this is very real. This is very tangible, and it already competes with like companies like Home Depot, or Costco, or like whatever, or Exxon Mobil. Um, so um, it's definitely nowhere, nowhere near kind of just like a gimmick for for a few individuals. Uh, so a quick summary. Um, you are the crypto native economy. Since you're here, I guess like you somehow participate in this ecosystem. You all paid like fees on L1, L2s. I would definitely encourage you to read the reports and give us some feedback. Um, um, I'm wearing the t-shirt banks hate us, and it's usually my final slide, but I'm not using it today. But banks hate us because we are winning. Um, and I had multiple talks on the crypto native economy and the crypto native generation. Uh, where I argued that in the, especially in the beginning of the bull market, we are at the stage of like now they are fighting us. And I think we are now finally in the stage of, uh, of actually uh, getting the recognition and being considered real from the rest of the world. Um, before I depart, um, this is a slide that I used in 2022, exactly like in the bear market, um, which basically looked at the crypto native economy numbers and just like concluded it was actually super small uh, despite the uh, despite the valuations, um, and it was peanuts back then, it's still peanuts today, uh, but there is another peanut, um, it's an inside joke, I'm not a Trump supporter, uh, but I just think a peanut is hilarious, uh, and I would just say, like, crypto is very real today already, uh, today we're past the uh, first day, uh, ignore us, then they will ridicule us, and then they will fight us, I think today we're at the stage where crypto started winning, uh, finally, and uh, I can't wait to see what, what happens in the next few years. Um, thank you all for coming. Well, I think we have a couple of minutes for questions. That was awesome. Thank you so much, Joseph. You can scan this QR code and write questions. We have a couple minutes to answer your questions, but please, we need to do it through the through the QR code. You just you just take the code and then you can place your question and I will help you with that. So I'll give you one minute to do that. Meanwhile, um, I wanted to say it's fantastic to have you all here. This DEF CON 7 is going to be epic. It's going to be amazing and all of us and all of you being part of this is really fantastic. So I want you to give yourself an applause for being here today. Please. No questions yet. I, I saw someone raising a hand. Should we just do the questions from people that raised a the hand? There's a gentleman right here. We can try that. Meanwhile. Sure, sure we can. Just, Come on. Sure we yeah, can. Sure we can. They're giving me. So, yes. so anyone wants to shout a question? Please. Yes, I'll go. So where you say we are in the first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win, you're assuming that we're right now in the middle of the they're fighting us or that we've passed that they're fighting I, us? That I seems very naive. Don't you think there's much more, much harder fights? It, uh, probably in the near future. The, I mean, there there will be, but I think like at this stage, we are we basically are past the past the they are fighting us. There is there is like a lot of lot of like embracement in crypto, and you see it like get, take Switzerland as a as a as an example. Um, even like us first starting company in Switzerland, we got rejected by multiple banks, including like the Zurich and like Zurich cantonal banks and so on. Um, and last year, they started providing the same crypto services to their regular customers. And it's just like, that's the, that's the early birds, right? And I would say, like, we are going to see more and more, even banks that will start custodial services for crypto users, uh, because the, the, the economic demand is there. And like more and more, even traditional fintechs uh, are embracing that. And they, they just see it as a revenue stream. So I say, like, now, now we're winning in the sense of getting the recognition and actually like 
getting them integrated into our, our own ecosystem. Um, maybe naive, but I'm like being in the ecosystem for quite a bit. I'm, I'm quite optimistic about this being the stage right now. Perfect. So now we have questions on the on the QR. So Joseph, could you please talk a bit about consumer payments in crypto stables as a real world usage of tech? Um, that I mean, I'm not sure how much time we have, but I think it's actually becoming like realer with the L2s, uh, with the providers that like pay your gas fees. Like three years ago, that would be very, um, very hard. Uh, I, I used to collaborate with this like group that was running a crypto-only cafe, uh, and it was it was a burden, like actually paying for gas fees and like teaching people like how it works. Uh, many people used it, but definitely wasn't a real-world use case. I would say now with like um, like gas being paid for you on L2s, it's like very, uh, very possible. Um, and I mean, I'm sure we are going to see more businesses just like accepting crypto regularly. And it's, it's, it's been happening for a decade now, especially in the past like few years. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Joseph. Please give a big applause for Joseph and this great talk. Appreciate it. Thank you.